everybody to go look alive. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. It is a beautiful day in Rhode Island, spectacularly beautiful, and hope everybody gets a chance over the next few days to enjoy it. I think John Guy Orsi, Go Local's weatherman, gave it a nine today. Pretty hard to get a 10 out of John Guy Orsi, but he gave it a nine today. So get out and enjoy it and stay safe, of course, while doing it. Let, let's go to our partners, Mott and Chase, Sotheby's International. They sort of, they know everything about the crazy real estate market here in Rhode Island. We're gonna go with Bridget uh, Sobe. Bridget, thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, Josh. Thank you so much for having me. Delighted to be here this morning. So the last couple of weeks, we've been very Providence-centric with, uh, with the Mott and Chase folks. I'm glad we're getting, it's such a beautiful day. We're going down to South County, maybe head over to the wall at Narragansett Beach. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the South County real estate real estate. Market. Sure. Uh, the South County real estate market, the luxury market in South County certainly is very, very strong. Uh, the entire market in Rhode Island is really quite strong right now. Uh, with any given point in time, we generally only have one to two months worth of inventory. So it's certainly making for a really competitive marketplace. Uh, the million dollar plus market though, there is a little bit more room. Uh, things are staying on the market a little bit longer. Generally speaking, the million dollar and under price point, things are staying on the market about 35 days. So things are moving very quickly. And a million dollar plus, you have about a 90 to 100 day buffer. So you have a little bit more room, not much, but a little bit more room. Um, let's talk about the market because you know we've talked about Providence, I think, uh, I think in January's number, there was 13 sales just on the east side, and the average median price was uh, 835,000. Are you seeing the same level of price point and increase year over year down in South County, in Narragansett and South Kingstown that we're seeing up in, in the Providence area, especially on the east side? Yeah, we're definitely seeing a huge increase. Uh, if you take a look at February from 2020, as compared to February 2021, we are a 21% increase in terms of the list price. All of South County, I say the list price right now is about 579, and that's an increase over, I think, 439 from last year. So there's definitely an increase. Um, if you also look at the luxury marketplace, from January 1st to today in 2021, we have had 41 single family homes over a million dollars go under contract or pending. And if you take a look at that same time frame compared to last year, which was pre-pandemic, of course, there was only 10. So we've had a 300% increase in terms of the demand for luxury properties here in South County. So it's uh, astronomical and it's certainly uh, a bit of a luxury real estate boom down here in South County. So I'm Rhode Island born and bred. I don't love the idea of these New Yorkers or, or uh, Connecticut folks coming here. How many of those $41 million plus homes uh, have been the infiltration of these folks from out of state? The majority. The majority of them are, we are seeing, I think there's a 63% increase in buyers coming from Massachusetts 2020 versus 2019. So that's that says something. And New York buyers were 149% increase from 2019 to 2020. So uh, Connecticut, there's also a slight increase. We're seeing buyers from Pennsylvania, New Jersey coming in. A lot of buyers are coming in from California, believe it or not. Uh, the high tax rates and high cost of living in California is kind of driving people um, from West Coast to East Coast. They still want the ocean, they want the beach lifestyle, um, but it's a little bit more uh, palatable here on the East Coast than it is for the West Coast people. So yeah, a big influx of people coming from out of state for sure. Talk a little bit about, you, know, you just had a major sale in the last few months, a $9 million property on Jamestown. First, describe the property for us, and then what goes into finding the right buyer for that right seller? Sure. Um, we did have a $9 million sale in uh, Beavertail in Jamestown. Um, Jamestown was a really hot spot after coronavirus. People really wanted a little bit more space, a little more social distance. Uh, they wanted to have kind of resort-like amenities at home. So um, certainly having the space, having the water feature, being waterfront, sitting home, watching those sunsets, 
um, and having space between you and your neighbors is, is certainly key in what people were looking for. Um, people from Boston wanted to come in and have a total change of lifestyle. They were living in the city and just wanted something that was a complete 180 from what they were currently living. So um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a demand for those, for those amenities and those features. Uh, Kate Nagel, our news editor, had a piece this past weekend about Dutch Island, which is kind of a famous island yeah. just off Jamestown that is, yeah. uh, you're not allowed to visit because of a number of environmental factors, some endangered species. But my oh my, that would be a nice spot to have a home. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely seeing that people want, you know, the trend of less is more that we've seen for the past few years has really done a complete flip. Um, people want more outdoor space, more indoor space, more square footage. They want those McMansions that went out of style. They're back in style. Private gated homes, private islands like you're talking about. Those type of features are really what the buyers want. Um, I think the uh, intangible amenities like security and space and family and health, that's really what the buyers are looking for these days. And uh, the home is just an outward reflection of that. So uh, yeah, the demand for homes um, and the amenities have, have changed due to coronavirus and uh, 2020. So we, we live on the east side, you see these crazy bidding wars. An open house takes place and they get 20 offers. All of them are over asking price. <laughs> Almost all of them are cash buyers. Are you seeing yes. the same level of sort of just in, intangible ferocity in the yes. buyer trying to nail down a house as quickly as they can? Yeah, I think especially with the weather changing right now, we've had a little bit of a dip over the holidays, not much, but you know, with the warm weather coming, people really want to make their plans where they're going to be this summer. Um, and you know, it's not going to be a week vacation anymore. People have changed the way that they travel. The season is extending. It's becoming longer. People are spending months at a time at their secondary homes, their tertiary homes. And so, yeah, people really want to nail down a place and uh, it's competitive out there. If something is priced well um, and has those amenities that we're talking about, yeah, it's, it's going to fly off the shelf and you better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> um, are people really just shifting that their summer home or, or the summer home that they were thinking about buying is now going to be the future home? You know, we just, I was just on the phone mm -hmm. earlier today with uh, uh, a senior person at one of the major corporations in Rwanda, and he was talking about you know, uh, who's going back who's going to the back? office, when they're going back to the office, if they go back to the office, right. will they go back once a month, all these sort of undefined futures of work. Are you seeing people buying, thinking about, this is not only the place that we're gonna live and summer and recreate, but this is also a place that, uh, where my home office is, and I wanna be able to look out at the bay in between Zoom calls. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Um, I think Rhode Island is a really special spot where people can pop into the city a few days a week. They're certainly not going back the way that we used to. People are able and willing to spend more time away from the office. They can work remotely. So people are definitely um, spending significantly more time at their supposedly vacation home or summer home. It's certainly becoming, you know, month long, several month long um, trips to their secondary or tertiary homes here, for sure. And are we seeing houses, you know, one thing about Rhode Island, a million dollar house used to be an expensive house, n n now no longer in certain areas. That's, you know, in Newport, right. a million dollar house means it's in the fifth ward and it's got that's right. in a, in a <laughs> roof. I mean, that, that's all, that's the standard now for Newport. Yes. Um, uh, in, in, in Jamestown, Thanks. Narragansett, yeah. Uh, you know, Watch Hill, Westerly, Weekapog, all those sort of places. Uh, is it a $3 million entry point? I mean, what's, what's sort of the going rate that I want to have, you know, a, a nice home? Sure. Well, it depends. It depends on what you define as nice. I and mean, when you look at something that's going to be on the water, you're, you know, multi-millions for sure. If you're going to be able to access the water, look at the water, um, you're going to be over that, you know, two, three million dollar price point easily. Um, but, you know, if you want more space and you don't mind or you want to walk into town or something like that, you can get into something, you know, Jamestown for, you know, a million dollars, I'd say is certainly something that's that's a possibility to get a nice place, walk into town and, and have some of those features. Um, but waterfront is obviously number one, the most desired thing out there. And so it is competitive and it's certainly driving those prices 
through the roof. That $9 million sale that you spoke of, that was record breaking in Jamestown. So uh, that was the highest sale ever recorded in MLS. So yeah, things are things are creeping up. <laughs> Get in yeah. while you can. <laughs> right. When you look at the house you can buy in for $9 million, which is you know, in, in most of our worlds, an, an exceedingly large amount of money. But you go and look at the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times and you see what houses are going for for $20 million and yes. $40 million and $90 million. And you go, well, that house in nine, for $9 million in Jamestown is nicer than the that. The bargain. Yeah, that $60 million house out in the Hamptons. You got it. So we are seeing it. We've always seen that, you know, over the past few years, but even more so now that, um, you know, when you compete with the Hamptons or Nantucket or Chatham, our prices are a lot more tolerable. Um, people are finding it's it's really still the hidden gem, not so hidden anymore, but it is the gem where the prices are, are significantly better. You get more money or more value for the money than you do in some of those other places. So uh, it's still a great spot to buy. The location of Rhode Island is really really special that you're in and out of New York and Boston really easily. You know, there's no bridges to deal with. You don't have to fly out and worry about the fog. You've got a lot of pluses going for you in Rhode Island. And I think people have really started to figure that out and uh, it's starting to creep up. Yeah, listen, my next call is to Governor McKee to make sure we get a poll on all these New Yorkers, Connecticut, <laughs> Mass people coming in. Well, last question, and it's an important yeah. question. Are we going to see significant inventory uh, this spring? You know, this is the key buying season. People are anxious to try and find that place. As you know, you know, record number of vacancies in New York City. Rents yeah. in Boston down 20% in a year. Um, right. People are anxious. There's a lot of wealth. There's a lot of cash on the sideline. Are we going to see uh, enough inventory or are we going to see 20, 30 offers on significant properties? Um, I think we'll still see multiple offers. Uh, things will loosen up a little bit as we get into the spring, but uh, in the higher end of the market, a lot of those are secondary and tertiary homes. So they are able to put them in the market if they want to take advantage of how strong the market is performing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think some more stuff will come on, but it certainly isn't going to be, you know, easy pickings. You're still going to be a competitive marketplace and you need to work with a really great agent who's super in tune to the market. Uh, things are changing moment by moment. And uh, if you're looking for something, you, you need to be on it. Absolutely. I don't see that changing. Bridget, thanks so much. Congratulations on all the success. Um, Thank you so much. We'll be hearing more during the, during the course of the summer and uh, maybe get you back and you can fill us in on some of the uh, interesting twists and turns of this yeah. real estate market. None of us have ever seen this uh, yeah. like, the, like this market. So congratulations. For everybody else, stay tuned. Uh, we'll have much more. There's a big story going on on the uh, IGT uh, Twin River battle for the long-term contract with the state of Rhode Island. That will be up uh, at the noon e-blast. And also look for some updates on what Governor McKee is going to be doing with the state budget the major $1.9 trillion stimulus package should be approved by the House uh, today at uh, this afternoon, sometime in the early afternoon. That's a windfall from the state of Rhode Island. It could mean as much as $800 million to Rhode Island to a $1 billion of additional federal aid. Everybody stay safe. Please, please wear your mask and enjoy this beautiful day. Thanks, everyone.